Hello, Revelation 12, jumping in, so brace yourself. Uh, I'm going to begin with Satan thrown down to earth. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation of the power, the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. It goes on, um, but I'm clinging on to that and saying, we're part of a war. Newsflash, we're part of a war. Um, we're all born into it. And where we end up on what side is determined by what we make of Christ Jesus. What we say about him determines where we sit in this war. Are we going to be those that are bound, our hearts full of uh, pangs and hooks that tear away at us on all sides as our desires and our passions of the flesh lead us as we're tempted by the, by the Satan, by the accuser, who just loves to go at God's image, right? He, Satan isn't primarily focused with making you feel bad about yourself. His primary focus is actually to come up and rebel against the image of God. He hates God. He's rebelled against God. He's exalted himself up against God and has tried to fight for that place. And so, us being image bearers of this God, well, how would he not like to tear away at us it's almost like someone saying um i don't know i don't know if you've ever had an older I'm, I'm a younger sibling my older brother if he wanted to get at me he'd get at the things that i that i've made perhaps if i've made something he might tear away at it and it's like oh no that's got to my heart because actually that was a part of me that was a representation of of my creativity of my my time and, and using it to to just express myself God's expressed himself through us, right? He's, he's made us in his image. And the enemy hates that. He hates us. He hates the fact that we're um, chosen, that God has chosen and he's seen fit to make us the ambassadors. Yes, it went wrong, but he had a plan to make it right. And Christ Jesus is ultimately the only way to overcome the power of sin and the accusation that comes up against the brothers. As we're told, he's, he is the accuser of the brethren, but he's been defeated. He's been thrown down to earth. And salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come. The accuser of our brothers has been thrown down. Who accuses them day and night before our God. Who is, it's before our God that he accuses us. He stands, if you remember the scene in, in Job where God and the devil have this dialogue and it's almost like God's showing Job off to the devil and saying have you considered my servant Job there's none like him he's just super good he's, he's upright and the devil wants to present an alternative case before God and we just think if you're not standing in Christ Jesus and your righteousness is not determined by the blood of the lamb if you haven't overcome power of sin by the blood of the lamb which is as far as i can understand from reading the scripture that's the only way that we can overcome is through the blood of the lamb through taking part in the communion um, so that we might partner with the work of the cross and say yes i died to myself i'm covered by the blood of the lamb and i am risen in this new life because the life is in the blood and ultimately, the, the life, as we know, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Well, the life is in the blood. 
and that is what we have salvation through. It's not through gleaning truth. It isn't ultimately through gaining more knowledge. It's ultimately, hands down, blood of the Lamb. That's what we must be covered by. And that's what we stake our salvation on. Because there is a war going on. And our stake in it, that is determined by where we choose to stand. Are we standing on our own righteousness and being then subject to the power of the enemy, trying to put up our own fight? No. We stand in the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, untouchable. There's that great song that I love to sing the line. There's no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. I'm untouchable. Come at me. I'm untouchable, baby. And there's also this song, Maverick City singing. If you're looking for me, I'm under the blood. If you're looking for me, I'm under the blood. That's where we need to make our home. Uh, so we're protected from this ravaging war that is still going on. Even though he's defeated, his time is short. So what will we do with our remaining time on this earth? The enemy's time is short. Let's not think that we have all the time in the world to tell other people. I'll see you again.